Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to my first Pioneer video on Magic Online and for my first Pioneer deck I wanted to build around one of my favorite cards, Demonic Pact, a 4 mana enchantment that can lead to some pretty exciting games because at the beginning of your upkeep you have to choose one mode that hasn't been chosen yet between dealing 4 damage to any target and gaining 4 life, target opponent discards 2 cards, draw 2 cards so it can give us a nice bit of card advantage but then the fourth mode is you lose the game, so if Demonic Pact stays in play for all four turns, you will eventually be forced to choose the mode that makes you lose the game, which of course we want to prevent from happening, so we either need to win the game before that happens, or we need to find a way to bounce the Demonic Pact back to our hand, or flicker it somehow, and that's where Teferi's Time Twist comes in handy, a two-man instant that lets us exile target permanent we control, and return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, so the Time Twist is a nice way to reset Demonic Pact and get value from all the three other modes once again. Then of course at some point we still need to win the game. We also have another way of bouncing Demonic Pact back to our hand and that's where Crush of Tentacles comes in. A six mana sorcery that also has Surge for five mana. So we can cast Crush of Tentacles for five mana if we've cast another spell this turn and we've got plenty of cheap spells to enable the Surge on Crush of Tentacles and then we get to return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands, and if this spell's surge cost was paid, we also get to make an 8-8 blue octopus creature token to help us uh, close out the game as well. So Crush of Tentacles not only resets all the opponent's permanents, but also helps us bounce Demonic Pact back to our hand, as well as maybe making an 8-8 octopus to help us win the game. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Fatal Push as a nice cheap removal spell. We've got the four copies of Opt to scry one and draw a card. Great way to enable Surge on the Crush of Tentacles as well. And then also the full playset of Thoughtseize to take a look at the opponent's hand and make them discard a non-land card at the cost of two life. Great way to check for counter spells. Enable Surge on Crush of Tentacles while checking that the coast is clear. So just a very important interactive element in this deck. Then to add even more hand disruption to the deck, we also have the full four copies of Thought Erasure, which also lets us take a look at the opponent's hand and take any non-land card. We also get to Surveil 1, giving us a bit more card selection. Then we've got our four copies of Teferi's Time Twist to combo with Demonic Pact. We could also use Time Twist to reset the loyalty on Narset, or next card. Three mana Planeswalker starts out at five loyalty, and each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn as long as Narset's in play, so can definitely disrupt the opponent's card draw capability abilities and then the minus two lets us take a look at the top four cards of our library and we can choose a non-creature non-land card from among those and put it into our hand and all the non-land cards in our main deck are non-creature spells that we can find with Narset so great at finding demonic pact or ways to interact with our demonic pact then we also have the full playset of hero's downfall as more removal an instant speed way to deal with a creature or planeswalker from the opponent we're playing this over murder's rider so we can find it with Narset then we've got our four Demonic Pacts, two Crush of Tentacles to reset all the Pacts and give us a win condition, as well as two copies of Dig Through Time, which is still legal in Pioneer, as an 8 mana Delph spell at instant speed, letting us take a look at the top 7 cards of our library, put two of them in our hand and the rest on the bottom in any order, so it can also help us dig for Demonic Pacts or ways to interact with our Demonic Pacts if we already have them going. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward. We've got one Castle Vantress, which can maybe help us cry to find whatever we're missing. We've got an Urborg, turning all our lands into swamps, so we can more easily cast our double black cards like Hero's Downfall or Demonic Pact. Then we've got our four Shock Lands in Watery Grave, counting as both Island and Swamp, coming into play untapped at the cost of two life. Four Drowned Catacombs, which come into play untapped if we control an Island or a Swamp. And then we also have four Choked Estuaries, which come into play untapped if we can reveal an island or a swamp from our hand. So it gives us even more untapped blue and black on turn one, which is important for casting Thought Seas and Opt in the early turns. And then we've got five basic islands and five basic swamps to round out the deck. We could also consider playing Fabled Passage in our mana base as a way to enable a revolt for Fatal Push and as a way to put an extra card in the graveyard for the Delve from Dig Through Time. But there is also a downside to playing fetch lands in this deck, since we do put some cards on the bottom of our library with the Narset activations and with the Scries from Opt. So shuffling all those cards back into our library can also be a downside if we need to find a very specific card before uh, we kill ourselves with Demonic Pact. So there are advantages and disadvantages to maybe playing Fabled Passage, but for now we're going without.
Then taking a quick look at the sideboard, which is still very much a work in progress as the Pioneer metagame keeps developing. We've got two copies of Pithing Needle to shut down opposing activated abilities, like maybe a Smuggler's Copter, Aetherworks Marvel, various Planeswalkers, lots of activated abilities worth shutting down. We've got two Duress as more hand disruption against the more controlling decks, then two copies of Collective Brutality as more hand disruption, or a way to interact with cheap creatures or maybe gain life against the burn decks. And the reason why we're playing so many discard effects instead of maybe counter spells is that we really need to make sure we can clear a path for the Demonic Pact, and since Demonic Pact is a 4 mana card, it's kind of difficult to play Demonic Pact and keep up a counter spell at the same time, so the way we kind of interact is by playing discard spells first to check that the coast is clear, and then the discard spells also make it so bouncing the Demonic Pact becomes a lot safer and we don't need to worry about opposing counter spells as much. Then we've got two copies of Drown and Sorrow as a cheap sweeper, giving all creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn, and we also get to Scry one. The reason we're playing this over Cry of the Carnarium is because we're also playing Kalitas in the sideboard, so that way if we cast our Drown and Sorrow with Kalitas in play, we get to convert all those creatures into zombies instead of exiling them with Cry. And then of course Kalitas is great against aggro decks for mana three for lifelinker, and can turn opposing creatures into zombies if they die. And then we also have two copies of Languish as another bigger sweeper, giving all creatures a minus four minus four until end of turn, as well as three copies of Leyline of the Void as our graveyard hate of choice. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, gonna have to mulligan a Nodelander. This is better. And then probably bottoming one Narset. And then I get to either opt or fatal push turn one. If they have an elf, we can kill it. Green whites, not our elvish mystic. All right, well, let's uh, push it once again. I guess we'll opt to hit our land drop in case uh, it's not our estuary. Narsetal bottom, not our pact. So, yeah, I'll need to hit my land drops here. Otherwise, um, we're in trouble, but at least we dealt with the first couple elves. Steel Leaf Champion, for toughness, lines up well against my Demonic Pact at least. Try and find maybe Hero's Downfall. Oof, wow, a brick, four lands. Yeah, I wanted to draw those four lands. So that's pretty rough. Gonna lose our Narsa to a single attack without getting any value. And we put four lands to the bottom. So Champion kills Narsets. And a Merfolk Branchwalker. So it looks like kind of a green-white creature mid-range deck. Play another Narsats. Hopefully this time find something. Alright, there's all the cards. Take a downfall. So I'm gonna take five. Narsat's gonna die. Hopefully I just draw land for Pacts. Otherwise I can downfall the champion at least. So yeah, this game's not been going great. But... If I draw land now, I can still get back into it. Thought Seize instead. Alright, so the plan is to downfall the Steel Leaf. I guess I'll do it in their upkeep in case they have like a God's Willing or something. This a collected company maybe, yep. Finds Lanor Elves. And that's it, so not, uh, not a great company. Champion down. So I'm only taking four here, which is manageable. Come on, land. Time twists. Don't even know if I want to cast a Thought Seize. My opponent probably doesn't have anything in hand that I can take away. Could be a removal spell, which we don't care about. So I think I'm just passing. Not our company. Well, this one's probably going to be better than just Lenorolves. Steel Leaf and Jade Light Ranger. So am I dead? 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, we're dead on board here. All right, that's unfortunate. Let's see if we can learn anything else from my opponent's deck here before we go to sideboarding. Doesn't look like it. But this seems like a pretty beatable strategy in general. Just a mid-rangey creature deck. So what do we pick up? Two copies of Languish look great. Kalatos could be okay. 
Um, don't think I want Drown in Sorrow, even though it gets the Elves. It doesn't get Steel Leaf and the other three mana payoffs most of the time. Collective Brutality on the other hand, I do like, since it both kills a Lanor Elves and maybe takes away Collected Company. Could see cutting some of the discard spells. My opponent doesn't have much in the way of interaction for my enchantment. They could have Dromoka's Command, I guess, which can deal with Demonic Pact. So that's maybe a reason to keep some discard. But for the most part, I prefer answering the board instead of picking apart their hands, since my opponent is playing to the board. But having early discard to take away a collected company, of course, can be nice. So I think I'll keep in two copies of Thought Erasure and then cut four Thought Seas to Thought Erasure to make room for these sideboard cards. And then it's possible my opponent has some Planeswalkers where Pithing Needle could come in handy, but they are a collected company deck, so they're gonna have creatures for the most part. And we still have Downfall to answer some Gideon's Ally of Zendikar, for example, that they could have out of the sideboard. We'll be on the play. And yeah, the sand seems fine. We'll need to pick up some lands, but we've got both Thought Erasure and Opts to help. Don't get to play my uh, lands on curve, sadly. Should have played a Drowned Catacomb instead of the Astuary here in case I drew a basic land. But if I draw a basic land, I guess this comes into play untapped. So probably doesn't matter too much. Alright, Laura Colitas. So we'll opt. Just want to find lands. Next turn I can Thought Erasure, maybe take away Company. And then the Thought Erasure can surveil me into more lands, hopefully. Turn to Loxodon Smiter. Well, that one's pretty good against the discard. But still dies to Languish, luckily. Alright, they have another Smiter, which we don't want to take, and a Ronos, which is pretty tough to deal with, and uh, yeah, that's a nice one to take away here. And then Fatal Push, I don't think I need to keep. Just looking for Demonic Pacts at this point. Also putting more stuff in the graveyard is great with our Dig Through Time in hand. So hopefully they run out another Smiter, and then we can Languish. Alright, perfect. This is going to be quite a massacre, pick up another Languish even. I could Kalitas first to get some zombies, but then Kalitas dies. And that would take some damage in the meantime. Alright, another Smiter. Demonic Pact is good, so I don't mind playing the Pact now. And then I can play Kalitas next turn, and then use the 4 damage from Pact to kill Smiter, or I could kill Smiter now if I feel like it but then I miss out on the zombie. And with Dig Through Time in hand, I'm pretty comfortable playing out Pact, since I'll have a way to find an answer before I die to my own Pact. And Jade Lights, find Steel Leaf Champion on top. It's another target for my Languish, potentially. So let's draw to a couple lands, that's not bad. So let's play Kalatos. And then next turn I can use back to deal 4, cast Dig Through Time, and go looking for an answer. I guess I could also just trade here for the Jade Light if they offer. Yeah, sure, we'll trade, since we have another Kalitas in hand. Gain 3, make a Zombie. There's a Steel Leaf. So I'll deal 4 to the Steel Leaf. And pick up another Pact, which is another way of digging deeper for an answer for the first Pact. Crush of Tentacles can pick up both, potentially. So we are in control of the situation, more or less. Let's see, five cards in Graveyard, so I can dig for three, but then I can't play Pacts. I guess I'll cast a dig now, just to be safe, in case I find Narsets instead of Answers, and then I can still deploy the Narset to dig me towards a way to bounce my Demonic Pact. We did find a Time Twist and an Arset, so we'll take both of those. And then play an Arset. And there's a Crush of Tentacles, another Pact. I guess I'll take the Crush. Alright, so we're definitely in control here. I'll leave Zombie back to chum block the Smiter if they attack an Arset, otherwise I think I'm okay taking four. 
Smiter attacks Narsets. Make my opponent discard too. And then I can minus Narsets. Cast Opt, bottom Urborg. Cast Crush. Suppose I could also just go Pact plus Time Twist, but this ends the game a bit sooner, I think. And pick up our Narset as well. Have an 8-8 in play. Discard a land to hand size. And my opponent packs it in. Alright. The Demonic Tentacles got it done. Any changes? Languish was definitely our MVP that uh, game. Killing Double Smiter. Opponent's probably going to be a bit more careful about playing those out. And the presence of Loxodon Smiter also makes me not want too much discard. So I think I still like this setup. Alright, this ends okay. Missing double blue for Narsets, but double Fatal Push as early interaction, and a Hero's Downfall we can cast. Thought Erasure good too. And the Ronos we saw in game 2 is also definitely a scary card that I would be happy to take away with the Thought Erasure. Opponent finds Jade Light Ranger, keeps it on top. Alright, so they have two Elves and a Steel Leaf Champion, so we'll just take the Steel Leaf Champion. And Watery Grave will keep. So we can cast our Narset. Suppose I could spend mana killing their creatures first, but I don't think I'm gonna get two Narset activations regardless. So there's a Jade Lights. And then what do I want to find with Narset? Demonic Pact, Languish. And looks like they kept another branch walker on top of their deck. Still two mana elves in hand. Alright, there's a languish and a demonic pact. Probably the languish. I have dig through time to find more action afterwards. So we'll just take a languish. Alternatively, I could have next turn cast. Downfall plus push, and then play Pact afterwards, which would have been reasonable. Having more removal can be bad in this matchup. So Narsa dies, we take 4. And they're gonna pass. Still probably gonna just languish here. Keeping the instant speed here as downfall is also nice, if we can do it end of turn after my opponent casts a collected company, for example. Right, there's a Smiter and a Demonic Pact. It's pretty good. So let's play Pact. And then I might just deal 4 to the Smiter first. So we still know about the opponent's hand here. They've got a Branch Walker and two Elves. So they might empty their hand. Finds Collected Company. That's a good one to know about. So they've got a way to refuel. And my opponent's all in. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna deal 4 to the Smiter here, play it safe. Find a Thought Erasure, which doesn't do much anymore. So I can push the Branch Walker and then maybe cast Dig Through Time here. Finding Languish, Narset, a couple Time Twists. More Time Twists aren't bad since I get to keep flickering my Demonic Pact. But maybe I want Languish to kind of clean up after they cast their Collected Company here. And then another Narset. There's also an argument for taking lands, but I still have my draw 2 left on Pact, which can probably draw more lands. So I'll take 2. And opponent's going to main phase collected company, maybe afraid of a counter spell, but that plays right into my languish. So now I can draw two, cast languish. My opponent's in top deck mode, and we might see concession after we cast a time twist here. Alright, so let's. Play this Revealing Swamp. 
play another pact. And time twist the first one. Gotta make sure I don't misclick. Alright, so we'll have two fresh pacts to draw a ton of cards, eventually find a Crush of Tentacles. We know there's a bunch of time twists at the bottom from uh, the dig through time. I probably should have just made sure to put the uh, time twists on top with the cards we put on the bottom in case I end up drawing my entire deck, but for now we'll just draw four. Alright, plenty of lands. So let's play Narsets. Another Pact. Can go even deeper. I could also just 12 my opponent here with all the Pacts. I guess I could have End of Turn Company finding a Steel Leaf Champion and Smiter and kill me, so maybe I should have kept up Hero's Downfall. But I also gotta make sure I draw enough cards here so I don't die to my own Pacts. Alright, so with this one I guess I'll make my opponent discard two. With this one I'll deal four to them. And with this one we'll draw two. Make sure they don't have a company in hand. Just a land. Alright, so I have one more turn to find answers for my Pacts. Let's use Narset first. And there's Crush of Tentacles, and that's probably gonna be game, and my opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet, so I was gonna be able to maybe wait another turn even, and then cast uh, Crush of Tentacles after getting max value out of all the Pacts. Also bouncing Narset, making an 8-8. Opponent would have been dead almost just from all the four damages from Demonic Pacts. And uh, Brutality could have also dealt two more damage, potentially. These types of creature matchups are definitely what we want to be facing with our blue-black Demonic Pact deck. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Gonna have to mulligan the zero land hand. This hand's awkward too with double dig through time. But I guess we'll keep and then bottom one dig. Let's see what we're up against. Blooming Marsh into Elvish Mystic. So maybe some sort of black-green elves. Can opt end of turn. And then I guess we'll be looking for some removal, Fatal Push, Hero's Downfall, Demonic Pact, of course. We'll let the Thought Seize resolve. Takes Narsets. And a Dragon Skull summits her point on Junt. Let's see what we can opt into. Don't need another land. But find one anyway. Alright, well, for now we're just gonna play land and pass. And then we'll have to hopefully draw into some action. As opponent plays Xenagos, the Raveler, can start making Seder tokens. But Hero's Downfall's a pretty good top deck. Just kill that now. Alright, so we're slowly getting to the point where we can cast our dig through time. Nissa who shakes the world on uh, turn 4, pretty good too here. Loss of Planeswalkers from the opponent, so Pithing Needles probably making an appearance after sideboard. Demonic Pacts, there we go. Not enough to kill Nissa by itself, so we'll need a bit of help. Assassin's Trophy to kill it, sadly. Do get to search up a land. So it's a bit easier to cast our dig through time. Finding a 1 mana spell to go alongside Crush of Tentacles would have been nice too. So yeah, I can cast Crush just to kind of reset the board, but it doesn't bounce the lands from Nyssa, which is a problem. So then we're still dead on board. So I guess I just gotta cast Dig, but I'm not sure if I can find anything to save me here. Yeah, there's not too many answers to Demonic Pacts that are seeing play, but uh, Trophy is one of them. Abrupt Decay, of course, doesn't hit it. And yeah, double time twist, but our Demonic Pact is gone. Alright, let's go to game two against the Jun midrange. So the Pithing Needles to name the various Planeswalkers. Plenty of hand disruption to take a look at their hand to see what we should name with Pithing Needle. That's why we don't need the Sorcerer's Spyglass. Languish could be okay. Kalitas could be okay. Matches up well against the 3 threes and the 2 twos that we've seen so far. Don't love Drawn in Sorrow since it doesn't get the Nyssa lands, and then the rest could also be decent. I could see Fail Push not being great, kills the elf, but we haven't seen any other creatures 
that um, we really want to kill with it. Killing a token or a, a land is not exactly where we want to be. I think we got Fatal Push. Everything else seems okay. So I think I'm just going to bring in the two copies of Languish over Kalitas since they probably have some removal in Planeswalker form for Kalitas as well. So let's try this. And see, yeah, that's a reasonable opening hand. I could take two to opt. I don't think I'm going to since I don't have a turn two play lined up at the moment. I can just opt next turn and play a tap to Warrior Grave. Opponent does have the turn one elf. There's a time twist to go with my Demonic Pact. I will cast opt now in case we find a Thoughtseize. But Urborg is a good pickup, so just play a tap to Warrior Grave. And then next turn we can cast Narset or maybe Hero's Downfall if they have a 3 mana Planeswalker we need to kill. Thoughtseize of their own can take away a Demonic Pact or Narset. Takes a Hero's Downfall instead, trying to protect their Planeswalker. Paradise Druid as another mana dork. Well, if they're playing like the full 8 elves plus Paradise Druid, then maybe Drown in Sorrow is good enough. For now we'll just play our Narset. And that finds Languish, Pithing Needle, and Dig Three Times. So my opponent did just take a Hero's Downfall, which could imply that Pithing Needle's good, although I don't know what to name yet since we didn't find any discard so far. Second Languish could be redundant, and of course Dig Through Time is just another powerful card draw spell, so can't go wrong with it. I think I'll take Dig, because Narset's likely to die, so that's an extra card in the graveyard. Alright, there's Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. Put some plus one counters on their creatures. So just casting a Languish here seems fine. Bone stuck on two lands, so casting Languish, killing their mana dork seems pretty good. Alright, the rest can take away Pact or Dig Through Time. Takes a Pact. And another Elvish Mystic. Alright, opponent's empty handed, so Thought Seize is not too useful. So we'll cast Dig. Finding Narset and could go for Pithing Needle to name Nissa. Could take the hero's downfall in case they find a scarier planeswalker. But I can play the Pithing Needle now, which seems good. So let's go Narset plus Needle. And then play Needle naming Nissa. And pass a turn. Alright, Thought Seize takes Narset. Pun is getting the better trades here with their Thought Seizes, since they're empty-handed, so my Thought Seize doesn't do much. But I can cast my Crush of Tentacles plus Thought Seize in the same turn if I want to. That will also bounce back my Pithing Needle, so they get to get a Nyss activation, but I get an 8-8, which seems good. So I'll need one more land for that. can also use Time Twist to reset Pithing Needle, which is pretty interesting. Alright, opts. I guess if I opt into a land I can still crush. Well, I'll take a Pact. So now we've got Pact plus Time Twist, Pact plus Crush. Mutavolt, a nice creature land. Start by drawing two. Lots of discard spells. I guess we can cast Opts. Try and find more action. Just play this for now and pass a turn. I guess I maybe should cast a Thought Erasure just for the Surveil. And bottom the land. I have enough mana to go Thought Seize plus Crush of Tentacles in the same turn. So we'll deal for damage to the Elf. Could also kill Nyssa, because then if I bounce a Pithing Needle I can name something else with it. I guess that's reasonable. The Elf doesn't bother me too much. Could also go face, of course, if I want to try and end the game. So we'll cast the Thought Seize, see what they're holding. Just a land. And I could crush now, which seems fine. Cast with Surge. Make an 8-8, and then I'm not gonna play the Pithing Needle quite yet. And then Crush plus Discard is also a nice combo, since you can potentially make them discard whatever they bounce back to their hands. But don't really mind my opponent replaying their Elf here. Alright, her opponent packs it in. The 8-8 is too much for them to handle. 
So any changes after that game? So I did mention maybe Drown Sorrow being good enough after seeing all those elves. Opponent could cut down some elves after seeing Languish. Could see shaving some discard. Maybe shave two Thought Erasures. Since it's not like my opponent's playing counter spells that I need to take away, they're playing discard. So that makes my discard a bit worse too. Maybe shave all the Thought Erasures. Just bring in two Drown and Sorrows and maybe two Kalitos. Try something like this. Didn't think I can keep a one lander like this. Alright, this is better. Now what to put on the bottom is an interesting question. It's probably the Kalitos. That way I get to keep my turn one Thoughtseize, Narsa to find more action, and Downfall as a clean answer for one of their Planeswalkers. Pact is a good pickup. Alright, my opponent has lots of Planeswalkers this time, also their own Thoughtseize. Vraska can also kill my Narsets with the minus. Nissa is their more powerful card. Thoughtseize can take my Demonic Pact. And Trophy can also kill Pact, but gives me a land. So I think I'm leaning taking the Thoughtseize here. Also denies my opponent a bit of information. And Thoughtseize is their only play for next turn at the moment. Alright, they picked up another Elf. And Languish could be useful. Alright, let's pass a turn. So if they play Nissa, we can Hero's Downfall next turn. And then the Languish can clean up the 3 3. There's Nissa. Alright, let's hope they don't have another one. And there's Raska. So still an Assassin's Trophy in the opponent's hand. Alright, I guess we'll play Narsets. And find Spithing Needle double packed. Could be greedy to take the Demonic Pact, but I know my opponent has Trophy, which can kill the first Pact I play. And if I bottom these two Pacts, I'm only gonna have one Pact left in the deck I can find. So I think I take Pact over Needle, but it's close. But uh, yeah, I really need to draw a fourth land next turn to cast Languish. Otherwise, I'm just gonna die to these random creatures. Opponent minuses Vraska to kill Narsets. And an opt to draw, not what we needed. And now the Mutavolt will be lethal unless I can find. Yeah, not sure what I can find, because even if I find a Drown in Sorrow, I can't cast it. I don't have any. Fatal pushes left in the deck, so I think that means we're dead. Yeah, that's too bad, our hand was quite stacked here, just needed land number 4, and yeah, there's a Drown and Sorrow, speak of the devil. Just uh, one land short of casting it. And there's a fourth land. Tapping out for Narsets just puts me dead on board, so I guess we'll pass. Opponent sacrifices their land to Vraska, plays another one, animates Mutavolt, and we're gonna be dead here. Alright, sadly the lands didn't cooperate in the last game, but still a pretty sweet match overall. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a bit of an awkward opener. Two tap lands, but I think I'm gonna try it. If I draw one basic to reveal with the Asturies, then we actually have a pretty functional hand. Perfect. Lead with the Thoughtseize. Up against blue white Myth Realized. And Gideon, ally of Zendikar, so some sort of spell-heavy beatdown deck. So, probably just want to take the Myth Realized, since I'm going to have trouble answering it otherwise. And then the Downfall can deal with Gideon. Like, I do have Downfall, which can also just kill the Myth Realized at instant speed, I suppose. But my opponent's also missing double wide at the moment. The Pact dealing for damage can also clean up Gideon or the token. They did find another Prairie Stream. So my opponent does get to maybe opt end of turn. And then next turn I get to maybe play Narset. Alright, it's gonna be Shimmer. Well, Narset seems pretty good against them if they have cards like opt in their deck. But of course they can play that uh, during our turn as well. Sadly, Narset doesn't find lands, which is what we need here. I already have a Time Twist. Probably just take the crush. 
since I have double packed, and when we have double packed, Crush is usually better than Time Twist. Don't know if my opponent has any counter spells in their deck we need to be aware of, but I can always try to empty their hand with Demonic Pact before going for Time Twist or Crush of Tentacles. So there's Gideon. Makes a token. Alright, land perfect. Activate Narset, finding... Probably just grab another Narset. Overthought Erasure. And then I could downfall the Gideon right now, or I can just jam Demonic Pact. I think I like playing Pact. And then what probably happens is my opponent pluses Gideon, so it doesn't die to the 4 damage, and then I can just downfall Gideon, and push can clean up the token at some point. So Gideon does indeed become a creature. And do they ignore Narset? Nope, they're gonna take a Narset with a Knight. So I'll take 5. Possible that taking the Thought Erasure was better. Especially if my opponent does have main deck counterspells. Alright, so we'll start by drawing 2 just to make sure I can hit my land drops. I guess we'll lead with Opts. Thought Seize. Would be nice to kind of check out what we're working with. But then I can't downfall the Gideon this turn, which seems important. So let's bottom that. Alright, Swamp is good. Don't really want to downfall Gideon now in case my opponent has a dig through time in hand, otherwise they get to cast dig end of turn. So I'll probably upkeep this, but I guess that means I have to discard to hand size. I probably should have pushed the Knight ally now, since that doesn't uh, fuel their graveyard for a dig through time. Alright, small misstep there. I guess I'll ditch a Narset, and then upkeep will downfall the Gideon. That works. Alright, so I probably should have had an extra Narset in hand by pushing the Knight ally in my own turn. Howlet Fountain untapped. And the Fairy Time Raveler. Alright. Are they gonna bounce my Pact for me? They are. And a Myth Realized. Another Downfall. Just gonna replay the Demonic Pact here. The fairy is very good against Pact if they can bounce it the turn you play it, but if you already got a bit of value, of course, they're kind of doing your work for you. Field of Ruin, my land, sure. And a Treasure Cruise to refuel. Fair enough. But he's got lots of cards in hand. Here, I guess I don't mind just killing the Teferi, although they're somewhat likely to play another one, and I can just kill it next turn then. So maybe I'm supposed to just draw two first, again hitting my land drops is important. And then we can play this, revealing Worry Grave. Getting a Narset in play seems important. And then I guess I'll opt in case I find a Thought Seize exactly. Can probably bottom the push. It is an answer for the Myth Realized if uh, Teferi is gone, that is. So maybe it is good enough. I guess I'll keep it. Play another Pact. And say go. And then next turn I can use the 4 damage mode to maybe take out Teferi, which unlocks my Fatal Push to kill Myth Realized. Getting Narset in place can be pretty huge too, stopping cars like Treasure Cruise. Right, Smuggler's Copter. Haven't seen too many creatures yet, so maybe those are still hiding. Second Copter. Well, Fatal Push is good against Smuggler's Copter, that's for sure. And Allegiance Landing to crew them. And the myth is going to become realized and smack us for four. Alright, so my opponent has three cards in hand. I could empty their entire hand, but I think killing Teferi is more important. So this kills Teferi. And this... Probably just draws me two cards, could make him discard two, which is also fair. I could also deal four to the Vampire, so they can't crew the Copters, and I still have push to kill another creature they animate. Maybe that's the play. Yeah, sure. Just played extra conservatively here. And this turn I'll get down Narsets. Activate Narsets. An embarrassment of riches here. What to take? I guess I'll take the dig through time and then play this untapped so I can both downfall and fatal push. Hope they don't play another Teferi. Otherwise I'll just cast a dig through time. 
and then next turn we can set up the Crush of Tentacles using Opts. Right, get an ally of Zendikar. That's fine. It's gonna make a 2 2 token, that's okay. Cruise a Copter, which I can Fatal Push. Myth Realized is activated. Beginning of combat. Attempt to push the Copter. And attempt to downfall the Myth Realized. Alright, so this makes my opponent discard two, the last two cards in their hands, and this draws two cards. Dealing four to Gideon would have been nice too, but we'll just end up casting the Crush of Tentacles here. Suppose I could also Time Twist. So History Benalia and Azorius Charm. So we'll first activate Narset, which we can also pick up with our Crush of Tentacles again. So yeah, this is pretty filthy. Thought Erasure for good measure. So I can cast my Crush with Surge. And then Thought Erasure away one of the cards I just picked back up. And I guess I'll take the Gideon. And bottom the Thought Seize. Gonna have to discard to hand size a bunch. I guess I will need the other Crush and Opt can go. Alright. So now we can... Hope to close out the game with the token here. Can replay two Pacts, which represents a ton more damage too. Do want to get uh, Narset in play as soon as possible, in case I top deck a Treasure Cruise. So Octopus attacks. So you can play Narset. I guess if I find a Fatal Push, I can play Pact, otherwise maybe I want to keep up uh, Hero's Downfall. Another Pact, sure. Alright, my opponent has seen enough onto sideboarding against Blue-White, Myth Realized. So there's not much I want to change. The rest seems quite good. Pithing Needle could name Copter or Gideon. Don't really want any Sweepers. The Discard is good, Fatal Push is good, Downfall is good. Can expect my opponent to bring him some counter spells. But to be honest, the main deck looks okay. I guess the rest is just better than Thoughtseize in this matchup. And maybe I can shave the other Thoughtseizes for Pithing Needles. And try this. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Opt to maybe dig for a bit of hand disruption early, find a Pact, and downfall as interaction, and then dig to refuel. And my opponent's just gonna pack it in, maybe their hand wasn't uh, to their satisfaction. Alright, so only one game here, but hopefully the other games and matches made up for it. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.